Hello everyone, this is Frank Demore, the head of the End Times Research Ministry, also the author of the book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. I want to cover a part of a prophecy from the book of Ezekiel. In chapter 38-39, we see that the Lord is revealing to us that Israel is going to be faced with a major war against the nations of Islam. You'll see on the left-hand side in that corner that there's a list of the nations. If you read Ezekiel 38 and 39, you'll see who those nations are. Of course, you'd have to go back to the Old Testament to understand the names of the Old Testament to understand the modern nations today as we know it. But the list of nations there are going to attack the nation of Israel in the last days. This is what the Lord reveals to us. We know it's the last days because the scriptures tell us, he says, in the latter years. And these are definitely the latter years. Now, one of the nations who are not going to participate in this attack against Israel is the nation of Saudi Arabia. You see the arrows from all these other Islamic nations coming down into Israel, going in after Jerusalem to wipe out the Jewish people. But Saudi Arabia isn't going to be involved in this Ezekiel war. And let me show you why I'm saying this based on the word of the Lord from Ezekiel chapter 38 verses 12 through 13. And it says this, to take a spoil, and this is talking about the nations coming down from the northern quarters, that's what we're told in Ezekiel, coming down to wipe out Israel, to take a spoil, to take a prey, to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited. And of course when Ezekiel wrote this, we know that in the future, Israel was going to be separated. They were going to be let off into captivity. And Ezekiel chapter 37 talks about the restoration of the nation of Israel, which has already happened in 1948. So the desolate places that are now inhabited, that prophecy has already been fulfilled via the nation of Israel. So let's go on. Which have gotten cattle and goods and dwell in the midst of the land. And obviously, if you've been over to Israel, you know that this part of the prophecy is already intact. It's been fulfilled. Israel is loaded with cattle, loaded with goods and silver and that dwell in the midst of the land. Now, take a look at this. Sheba and Dedan. These are the Old Testament names for Saudi Arabia. It goes on, and the merchants of Tarshish. Tarshish in the Old Testament is Great Britain. With all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, and to take great spoil? So what we know is Tarshish, which is Great Britain, they're going to have young lions. Now, who are the young lions? They're the break-off of Great Britain. Well, who are they? They're the United States, Australia, and Canada the young lions. Sheba and Dedan, Saudi Arabia. So, so what we know for sure from Ezekiel 38 verses 12 to 13 that Saudi Arabia, Tarshish, which is Great Britain, United States, Canada, and Australia are not going to be enemies of Israel. Now when you look at the current events, you see that's exactly the scenario from each one of these countries. Now the last one to really fit into this scenario would be Sheba and Dedan or Saudi Arabia because they are Islamic but whatever the reason they're going to be friend Israel and they will not be in the attack from the northern quarters by all these Islamic nations. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is because God has revealed to us far in advance what was going to happen before it actually took place. So if the generation is to be alive at the time that Israel's restored again, which obviously Israel is in place and we're alive, we're that generation, we should see these things fall into place. And what I mean by these things, we should actually see an Islamic state that has not been friendly with Israel to be turning over to be friends somehow 
with the nation of Israel. And this is what, exactly what we're seeing in the news right now, and that's why I'm bringing this to you. Let me go over to that news from Jerusalem Post. This news came out today, September 11, 2017. With the headline from that Jerusalem Post, Did the Saudi Crown Prince make a covert visit to Israel? As we scroll down, this is the prince, the Saudi Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. And it says this, Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, made a discreet visit to Israel despite the fact that the Jewish state and Saudi Arabia do not have official diplomatic ties. Israeli and Arab media speculated earlier in the week. Rumors about the momentous visit, which was not confirmed by Israel, started swirling when Israel radio diplomatic correspondent covering Arab affairs, Simon Aaron, took to Twitter to announce the visit. Aaron tweeted that a senior Arab figure from the Gulf region paid a visit to Tel Aviv last week, stirring immense interest in the Arab media. Israel Radio's Arabic language broadcast reported that the senior figure was a Saudi prince who met with the senior Israelis to discuss, now get this, regional peace. And I'll go on to talk a little bit about that. According to the report, the Israeli Prime Minister's office and the Foreign Ministry refused to comment on the news. One Arab media outlet reported that the senior official was Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Now, I don't pretend to know everything, but what I do know is the word of the Lord is the truth. And when he shows us that Saudi Arabia, or Dedan, is going to be in that area when the attack comes and they're not going to be involved against Israel, that shows us that the United States, who is allies, Great Britain, which is a great ally of Israel, and Canada and Australia as well, those young lions, along with Tarshish of Great Britain, are allies. So it makes great sense that as we get closer to these fulfillment, that Saudi Arabia would befriend the nation of Israel. And that's, at this point, looks exactly what's going on. Now, one of the reasons why I personally think that the Saudi prince would go and visit the nation of Israel is because ISIS would like to tear down Saudi Arabia. They would like to get in, just like they did in Iraq, and dispose the Saudi government. And the Saudi government does not want that to happen. The, the prince, the crown prince, doesn't want that to happen. And who best to befriend in that region would be the nation of Israel because they're the most powerful nation. So if they do make some kind of agreement, a peace agreement between the two nations, the Saudis know that Israel, in that agreement, would protect the Saudi Arabians if there were an attack by ISIS, the Islamic right-winged group that is trying to take over the world. So right now, as September the 11th, what we see in Ezekiel is spot on to what's taking place in the current events. Now, this article does come with a video. Let me play the video. These leaders voice concerns we all share about ISIS, about Iran's rising ambitions and rolling back its gains, and about the menace of extremism that has spread through too many parts of the Muslim world. I'm encouraged that they pledge cooperation to confront terrorism and the hateful ideology that drives it so hard. I believe that a new level of partnership is possible and will happen, one that will bring greater safety to this region, greater security to the United States, and greater prosperity to the world. This includes a renewed effort at peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians, and I thank the Prime Minister for his commitment to pursuing the peace process. He's working very hard at it. It's not easy. I've heard it's one of the toughest deals of all. But I have a feeling that we're going to get there eventually. I hope. 
So if you'd like to know more about this issue, you can go over and look at page 399 from my book. The book was updated. You can get it for free at my website. And here are those nations that I just mentioned and corresponding to the current news. I'll give you a breakdown of each nation, make it very simple for you, so if you'd like to share it with your loved ones or your friends, so that they can understand it very simply, you can either explain it to them, or you can give them my website, and they can download my book and read it for themselves. But, but the reason why I'm giving this to you is in case you don't believe that when you watch this, and you actually see it taking place, I'm hoping that some spark will ignite interest even more and that the end result will be that you'll receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior before these wars break out. All these signs are indications we're not that far off from seeing the rest of the prophecies fulfilled. And that means the book of Revelation that Jesus Christ gave to us and everything that takes place in that revelation. Now, as long as the president is in Israel and they're talking about peace and safety, we have to go to, again, the word of the Lord because while Saudi Arabia is making peace gestures now to Israel, look what Paul wrote to us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So, the Saudis, who are very aware that ISIS isn't going to stand still forever, they're going to make a move. And there is going to be destruction. There's going to be war. Now, one thing that we know is that in the Ezekiel War, Saudi Arabia will not be involved in that war. But there's another war that will precede the Ezekiel War, and that will be the Psalm 83 War, and Saudi Arabia is involved in that war. So if the peace process falls apart like it has since Jimmy Carter got Mahakam Begin and Anwar Sadat from Egypt and Israel to sign that peace agreement, and as I said, since then, it's always fallen apart that we're going to see war. We're not going to see a peace agreement. And that war will bring on a whole different atmosphere in the Middle East region. But by the time the Ezekiel War is fought, Saudi Arabia turns around and they will not be going after the nation of Israel. So all these things, these events are all connected the peace talks, and the individual nations who were involved in dealing with the nation of Israel and the turnout, as we know from the scripture and what's going to happen to these nations as an end result of going after the nation of Israel.